your rights to life, liberty, and property. Now, that, so what you're protecting is people's property. And then when you go across to the, the French, it becomes life, liberty, and fraternity. And so you have the left and the no, right no, no. in the parliament, no, 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 right? No, no, no. no? Equality, liberty, and, and fraternity. fraternity. Which is different than life, liberty, and property. And then when it comes here, it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, specifically because we're not talking about just people's property that's being invaded that you, that, see, the grievances are, that he's talking about are against life, liberty, and, pro and, and specifically property. Who owns what? Locke was most well, interested in property. Yes. Let's and, be, let's and, be, and, 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 I, and I think you see the evolution or the growth of any good idea. Yeah. That at birth it may not be the most fullest, but it's full of some good, and and so when you see the change towards the pursuit of happiness, that means so if I ain't got no property, I still got a right to yeah. live in, in as as well as anybody else and pursue it. The other thing that I think about is in this moment, knowing that that's our call, and and the Bill of Rights states that's what you're supposed to do when a government ceases to serve its people. But when you our Bill of Rights, huh? Our Bill of Rights. All right. In the in the uh, it states it says. Whenever a government ceases to serve its people, it's your duty to overturn or abolish that government. No, no that's a yeah. declaration. I mean, a declaration of independence. I'm sorry. What our Bill of Rights has is uh, the right to bear arms. Right. The the um, the, um, the 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 one the point I want to get to is when you when you look at why it's not happening, why there aren't more Mannings, why we don't see that is when we look at a government that has put more investment in doing what, even as you see this week on one of the programs, scaring straight, s straight enough that you won't stand up, scaring people, you know, with the threat of incarceration, mm -hmm. uh, of trying to do like they're trying to do now with the NDAA and so forth. I'm just saying this is a government that is perched down that long trail of finding ways to deny and suppress its people, even to the point that now you got drones in North Dakota. Oh yeah. And probably got them here in, in New York. We oh, just, yeah. I mean, yeah. flying. Yeah. You know? Drones, that's what. Yeah. Actually, what what I wanted to add before, because it was, what you were talking about was reminding me of the necessity defense, which says that you need to break a smaller law to uphold to stop a greater crime. So that's the reason that somebody would break in and trespass in a building to save a child or a, a person. Right. But because you mentioned drones, I want to say when we just had the, the Hancock 38 trial and we did get um, the first initial ruling, because there were two judges, the first ruling was they did not, they were not going to allow the necessity defense or the international law, which was the Nuremberg principles and our duty to stop the illegal actions of our government, or the necessity defense, which was just have a smaller crime in the effort to stop a greater crime. So those things are just disallowed. What was the justification for disallowing it? None. None. Just did just the motion was was uh, denied. <coughs> denied. <coughs> but then the next judge that that ended up actually hearing the case. It was a different judge, and then they had added an additional charge, which was a minor violation. They had already dropped the serious charge, but it allowed, it was the, the you know reason by which they could change all the motions that were decided were up for grabs oh, again. Wow. So it really worked in our favor. Of course, we were found guilty in the end anyway, but they did allow all of that in because, of course, you know that Syracuse is one of the three biggest drone, drone centers location, in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's Hancock 38, right? Right. Yeah. What Hancock is outside of Syracuse. Right. Yeah. 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 Hancock I, National Guard. There's, there's one thing about locks. Uh, you know, you talk about transparency. Or the, you know, you, you were mentioning in the in the talk that you know we have now have ability to have complete governmental transparency. I completely disagree with that. I don't think you'll ever have transparency under the current form of government and statism that we have. For every for every Bradley Manning, for every oh, WikiLeaks document that is leaked, there are a large number of secrets that have never been leaked. Right. You know, well, they leak it, but it doesn't get out. Well, I'm saying there's technology is there to have transparent government. I'm not saying right. that. Uh, in order to the have, will is there. right? Well, right. I'm just saying, like, well, I, I would go as far as to say that yeah, even do. with the technology, unless you change the structure 
of government as it is now. You right. cannot you cannot have transparency as long as you have well, a hierarchical system, uh, uh, a representative democracy. You're never going to have transparency. Well, a government that acts that, in um, bad faith, it's not acting for the common good. So as long as that's right. the right. circumstance, well, the, the we can have all. But I mean, I would go philosophically and their their ability to affect change and like not actually having transparent government by the government, but because of technology and because so many people are defecting from um, what their original job was, which is to create codes and, and figure out how to hide information, those same people are now doing the opposite and trying to make things transparent. And the numbers for Anonymous and these splinter groups that have come off of that have you know, pretty much doubled since the occupation movement began. And if they continue to do that, um, you know, the, the, the people who are creating the, the ways to hide information are you know coming out in droves to do the exact opposite. So right, that's my point. My, and my point is that the answer is not in reforming the government, right? The answer is in giving up on the idea of representative government and, and to work more towards this model, which is the model of direct government. Like, mm -hmm. there can't be secrets if you're at the table. Right. There can be no secret from you because you're at the table. Mm -hmm. You vote on whether there's a war. You vote on whether we have uh, a budget for health care and education. Somebody doesn't vote for it's you. Very, that's very interesting, um, but there are people in our occupation who would directly dispute that. In fact, the discussion earlier oh, today yeah. mm -hmm. from Chris was that uh, we, started, we started with the... Um, with the uh, soapbox, and a couple people, it wasn't just Chris, said that the contract was wrong because they didn't have an opportunity to ask questions of the lawyers, and that they felt they felt uh, uh, pressured to go along. So um, there, even in a, a model of direct democracy, we have the issue of. Do people show up for particular things and get informed? Right, right. And then do they have a chance to reform a process that has already moved forward? And, and I, I think that there will always be, I don't, I don't, I don't hear, I, I, I have sympathies with what you're saying, but I don't see the logical connections, one, between the notion that representative government can't work. I, I, I can see the sentiment, but I don't fully follow the logical I don't fully see why it's impossible. And then I also don't fully see how direct democracy somehow jumps out of those problems. Well, if, for first, first of all, on the, on the first point, you can't see that, it, that, that direct democracy can't work. I would, I would simply that ask representative you. Democracy right, represent, can't work. right, representative democracy. Right, right. I'd simply ask you at what point in our history of this country and this direct democracy well, do you see that it works? Okay, I don't think of problems of what's possible simply in terms of what has happened historically. Okay, well then, well then oh, that's a whole thing. I don't want to open that can of oil okay. because that's a big can yeah. right there, so yeah. we'll leave Agreed. that to the side. Well, Go to the second point, which is more, which, is, which I think is more applicable to the situation here and Chris, Chris Phillips and everything. Uh, there, so, so number one, well, number, number one, number one, just in terms of people having an opportunity to, to be informed. There, there was the opportunity. We have GAs. We have meetings. If you don't show up, you're GAs exercising. You're hours. exercising right. your rights. You're right. saying, like, if I invite you to come to my house to make a decision, like, Heron and Linda, come to my house. We're going to decide what's going on in our block this week. About we're going to decide on you know something about our block. Yeah, and you guys are come. Yeah. And if Linda comes because she's interested, and right. you decide not to, right. you've exercised. You're right. I would agree with that. So, yeah, so, so this consent. idea. Can he block her? Consent to <laughs> so, so this idea that you could come after we have, after we've worked on this for several weeks, and right. we keep asking people, do you want to have a say? Right. And then after we right. decide, you come and throw a hissy fit. Right. That's your problem. Well, <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's still a good, it's still a good example. It's still a good example. Yeah. You, you say I didn't have the right to sign this contract didn't have the information but actually the truth is he did. you are one and two you actually truly believe that the contract is void upon signing anyway because you think that there is a higher right the constitution anyway so why don't I sign and play the game that's the truth the second part of the truth is you present a proposal which appears like you are supporting doing something with the square, and the two objections to it are, well, one, we need to support what's already going on in the square, 
to expand it. And then, to not mention that, well, I came off of I wanted to move, and not to mention that I'm moving anyway.